All right, today we have a Fluke 412B high voltage power supply. While they're not terribly rare, you can find them on eBay, there's not a lot of people with them on the internet. You don't really see any teardown videos, etc. And these are, well, in their heyday, they were excellent lab supplies. Even by today's standards, they have pretty amazing precision and accuracy. Uh, so this is a 2.1 kilovolt, 30 milliamp supply that you can set um, in 100 millivolt increments. So you kind of set your voltage through all these switches. It also allows setting the polarity of the output to either negative or positive with respect to ground. Uh, this system also has an overcurrent trip of about 32 milliamps, and it has a rough readout gauge on it as well. Uh, these were pretty great for a lot of high precision uses. Uh, Fluke would quote them as being used commonly for calibration, partially because they are rated for 0.001% regulation. I believe with monthly calibration, they're rated for 0.02% accuracy. Uh, so these traditionally would be used for calibrating multimeters and the like. The nice thing is it's not a switch mode power supply as you'll see in a minute. It's a linearly regulated supply. So the nice thing about that is it is very quiet. There's no electrical switch noise in there whatsoever. They quote a one millivolt ripple. So the fact that you can have a thousand volt output with a sub one millivolt ripple is pretty impressive. That makes these things great for applications like PMT tubes, uh, gamma spectroscopy, anything else where a switch mode supply, like a cheap flyback based high voltage supply off eBay, etc., is going to introduce a lot of noise and not be ideal for that use case. You can pick these up for somewhere around uh, $100 to $200 typically if you search around for them a little bit. Uh, commonly they're used. The only caveat is they do contain power tubes in them used for regulation. So if you buy one and they don't quote that it contains the tubes, just be aware you might be spending another $50 on tubes, uh, which are not manufactured anymore, so you're stuck buying new old stock. All right, let's pop the cover off and kind of get a look at what this thing looks like inside. All right, here we have the top-down view. We took the cover off of the supply. Initially, we'll just walk through a little bit about what's going on in here. It's pretty interesting. So first, we have the front plate here. So we have the dials feeding through. They're all on these plastic offset spacers to give isolation. And they're just going into multi-pole selector switches. This board is the primary resistive divider. So all of these little um, plates you see here are actually ultra high precision resistors. Uh, I have one because one actually burnt out uh, and that's why the supply wasn't operating properly, but I've since repaired it with the closest modern equivalent I could make. So you can see that that resistor is actually called out as a 3.233K ohm resistor. It's basically a mica plate with some sort of wire spooled around it. Now, I found where this wire broke off. It actually broke off from one of the legs, but the wire doesn't appear to be copper. It almost is similar to a nichrome steel type of a wire, so I wasn't able to solder it back. Um, Regardless, by the time I found where it broke, I had already ordered some surface mount components to duplicate on a PCB board and make a similar resistor. Some of these resistors on the data sheet are actually specced out at something along the lines of 0.02% accurate. Uh, so again, just aligning with the fact that this was designed to be an incredibly accurate system. Moving back to the full supply here, we have this front resistor board. From there, we have some of the input power over here. So this is actually a tube relay. It's a time delay relay. We have two more relays here. They're open frame relays. One clicks in for the primary power. The other one provides high voltage power. 
Um, so basically this supply, you turn on the control voltage, the control circuit turns on, and there's a delay for the tubes. This actually uses vacuum tubes to regulate the power to warm up. Uh, so that's kind of some of what this board is doing. It also has the primary rectification capacitor. So it's a two by two microfarad. Basically they are making a positive and negative rail uh, with two microfarads of capacitance on each one. Uh, that capacitor is rated at 2000 volts. Uh, still works great. It still tests at about 2.1 actually, so just above. And that's probably because of the fact that it is a steel enclosed capacitor, so it doesn't dry out. Here we have a really nice high voltage transformer. We probably can zoom in on this guy a little bit. So zooming in on that transformer here, you hopefully can read it, but it takes either 115 or 230 volts in, and it generates five different taps for high voltage. So that makes it so you are not down regulating, say you wanna output 50 volts, you're not linearly down regulating 2000 volts to 50. It would select the tap, in this case the lowest tap is 400 volts. It also then has a floating 6.3 volt output, which is used for the heaters in the tube, and as well as 185 volt control voltage. Uh, one of the things that's interesting about the supply, also dangerous, is all of the controls for it are floating on top of the high voltage rail. So if you have 2000 volts on the output, the control interface board is actually at about 2100 to 2500 volts, which makes troubleshooting this a little challenging. So from that transformer, we walk over to this board here is primarily some power filtering and some Zener diodes to knock down some of these control voltages to lower voltages for some of these relay, uh, not relay, transistor logic going on. The transistors on this board primarily are amplifying a voltage for driving the grid on these two tubes. Now these tubes are the primary regulation device. So in a modern voltage regulator, you would have a BJT or FET transistor that's in series with your power, well in series with the current dropping some of that voltage down. Here they have these vacuum tubes. These are 8068 tubes. They're actually quite special. They're designed specifically for this application. So they can handle up to, I believe 3000 volts across them. At, and dissipate somewhere around 30 watts each. Uh, this switch right here that you see, that is a interlock. So if you open the top of this supply and try and turn it on, it doesn't until that switch is met. So for troubleshooting, you can tape it down. Although again, you have upwards to 3000 volts inside of this unit. So you need to be incredibly cautious when you're working in here. Finally, we can move over to this board over here, which is primarily the control board, if you wanna call it that. So they have some rectification here for your control voltages coming off that 185 tap. And then they have a series of transistors. Um, they also have a tube here. This is a voltage regulator tube. So similar to a Zener diode, but more accurate, that tube generates a very precise 83 volts across it. And they use that 83 volts as a reference for controlling the rest of the output voltage. So they have some differential amplifiers and some buffers made out of discrete transistors because back in the 60s, that's what you did. Right here, you can actually see um, that resistor that I showed you that died, I reproduced it with a piece of PCB board and three high precision SMD resistors just mounted in there. One of the other interesting things about this supply is this entire voltage regulation area here is encapsulated by a foam cup typically during operation that goes over that whole area. And what that does is that really thermally insulates it and maintains a constant temperature one other interesting thing here, and let's zoom in a little bit. One other interesting thing here is you can see this uh, plastic bobbin around the tube. So it's actually floating in the air, it's not attached to the tube, but what's wrapped around it is a very special wire. 
uh, that's making another resistor and it has a temperature coefficient somewhere around 1450 ppm per degree C, very specific number. Um, that is actually affecting the voltage divider circuitry here. So based on the temperature of that tube, its reference voltage changes a little bit. They're actually compensating for the temperature of that vacuum tube with that resistor wrapped around it. Again, that's what allows them to get these incredibly precise repeatable values so that you can use this for calibration. So zooming back out here, there's an overview of the supply. Uh, troubleshooting these once you have the schematic isn't terrible and here's the key. This whole control board I mentioned floats on top of the high voltage but what's nice is all of this control circuitry is on and running when you just have the uh, primary power on without the high voltage on. Now this board uses plus and minus about 260 volts so still you got to be careful when you're probing it. But now that makes it a lot safer to be just using a standard multimeter with multimeter probes. Whereas when this is floating on top of the high voltage, now you're outside of a typical, even like a higher end fluke meter. Uh, once you get into the thousands of volts, uh, you can't be probing that with just typical multimeter hand probes. You need some high voltage probes and it gets really difficult to start probing the individual components. So hopefully this is helpful if someone ever has to troubleshoot one of these. I have a basic Hackaday article about it that shows an example of how I walked through to find out that this resistor was bad. And hopefully this video helps someone out. If nothing else, I'm capturing a somewhat unique piece of lab equipment that I don't really see documented. So thanks everybody for watching. If you liked, check out other videos on my channel and let me know what you think.